The second was the latest in a series of calls over the past many months with the heads of state of our NATO allies and our, the European Union. Showtime. To bring them up to date on what the United States thinks is the current state of affairs and what's likely to happen in Ukraine in the coming days. Be afraid. Be very afraid. To ensure that we continue to remain in lockstep, that is, the European Union and NATO. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Despite Russia's efforts to divide us at home and abroad, I can affirm that has not happened. We're on a mission from God. The overwhelming message of both on both calls oh, son of a was one of unity, determination, and resolve. I shared with all of those on the calls what we know about a rapidly escalating crisis in Ukraine. They're here. Over the last few days, we've seen reports of a major uptick in violations of the ceasefire by Russian-backed fighters attempting to provoke Ukraine in the Donbass. I'm a bad pussycat. For example, a shelling of a Ukrainian kindergarten yesterday, which Russia has falsely asserted was carried out by Ukraine. We all go a little mad sometimes. We also uh, continue to see more and more disinformation being pushed out by to the Russian public including Russian-backed separatists, claiming that Ukraine is planning to launch a massive offensive attack in the Donbass. Well, this is interesting. Well, look, there is simply no evidence of these assertions, and it defies, defies basic logic. Hey, there's something awfully screwy going on around here. To believe the Ukrainians would choose this moment with well over 150,000 troops arrayed on its borders to escalate a year-long conflict. What am I doing? Russia's state media also continues to make phony allegations of a genocide taking place in the Donbass. It's all true. The boogeyman is real, and you found him. And push fabricated claims warning about Ukraine's attack on Russia without any evidence. That's just what I'm sure Ukraine's thinking of doing, attacking Russia. I have had enough of you! All of these are consistent with the playbook the Russians have used before to set up a false justification to act against Ukraine. There can be only one! This is also in line with the pretext scenarios that the United States and our allies and partners have been warning about for weeks. Wolf! Wolf! Help! Help the wolf! Wolf! Help! Throughout these tense moments, the Ukrainian forces have shown great judgment and, I might add, restraint. They refuse to allow the Russians to bait them into war. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. But the fact remains, Russian troops currently have Ukraine surrounded, from Belarus along the Russian border and with Ukraine to the Black Sea in the south and all of its border. Damn right you're scared. You know, look, we have reason to believe the Russian forces are planning to uh, and intend to attack Ukraine in the coming week. I'm looking into the future. <gasps> wow, there it is. I see you really blowing up. coming days. We believe that they will target Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, a city of 2.8 million innocent people. You know, yeah, you're right. Things could be a lot worse. We're calling out Russia's plans loudly and repeatedly, not because we want a conflict, but because we're doing everything in our power to remove any reason that Russia may give to justify invading Ukraine and prevent them from moving. I don't give a tuppenny fuck about your moral conundrum, you meat-headed shitsack. Make no mistake, if Russia pursues its plans, it will be responsible for a ca catastrophic oh, son of a and needless war of choice. The United States and our allies are prepared to defend every inch of NATO territory from any threat to our collective security as well. You die first, get it? Your friends might get me in a rush, but not before I make your head into a canoe. You understand me? 
We also will not send troops in to fight in Ukraine, but we will continue to support the Ukrainian people. You gotta be fucking kidding. This past year, the United States provided a record amount of security assistance to Ukraine to bolster its defensive. $650 million from Javelin missiles to ammunition. We also previously provided $500 million in Ukraine and humanitarian aid and economic support for Ukraine. And early this week, we also announced an additional sovereign loan guarantee of up to $1 billion to strengthen Ukraine's economic resilience. But the bottom line is this. The United States and our allies and partners will support the Ukrainian people. We will hold Russia accountable for its actions. The West is united and resolved. We're ready to impose severe sanctions on Russia if it further invades Ukraine. I'll hurt more than your feelings, you carnivorous canary. But I say again, Russia can still choose diplomacy. It is not too late to de-escalate and return to the negotiating table. I got enough friends! Last night, Russia agreed that Secretary of State Blinken and Foreign Minister Lavrov should meet on, Fe uh, on February 24th. Oh, son of a bitch! February 24th in Europe. But if Russia takes military action before that date, we'll be clear that they have slammed the door shut on diplomacy. And you will know my name is the Lord! When I lay my vengeance upon thee. They will have, they will have chosen a war. Oh, son of a bitch. And they will pay a steep price for doing so. Not only from the sanctions that we and our allies will impose on Russia, but the more outrage the rest of the world will visit upon them. You're out of order. You're out of order. You know, there are many issues that divide our nation and our world. But standing up to Russian aggression is not one of them. The American people are united. Europe is united. The transatlantic community is united. Our political parties in this country are united. <laughs> you serious? The entire free world is united. Russia has a choice between war and all the suffering it will bring or diplomacy that will make a future safer for everyone. Be one of us. Now, I'm happy to take a few questions. Uh, Nancy from Bloomberg. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Do you think that it is wise for President Zelensky to leave Ukraine if an invasion is as imminent as the U.S. says it is? That's a judgment for him to make and a determination as to whether or not. I've spoken with Zelensky a dozen times, maybe more, I don't know. And I was going, supposed to announce that there is another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to press conference. Said, "No, nah. I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And, uh, and uh, it's uh, in, in, in the pursuit of a, a diplomatic solution, uh, it may not be, fall, it may, may be the wise choice. But it's his decision. And do you have any indication about whether President Putin has made a decision on whether to invade? Do you feel confident that he, that he that hasn't made that decision already? As of this moment, I'm convinced he's made the decision. Oh, no tears, please. <laughs> it's a waste of good suffering. We have reason to believe that. There seems to be a unanimity of spirit to do, between the United States and Europe, to do some sanctions, the comprehensive sanctions, but are, is everyone on board with the exact same sanctions that you want to do? Uh, yes. Um, 
There will be some slight differences, but none. There will be more add-ons than subtractions. I'm going to bring the whole fucking diseased, corrupt temple down on your head. It's got to be biblical. And, and President Putin is going to oversee some nuclear drills this weekend. How do you see that happening? What, what's your reaction to that, sir? Thank you. Well, um, I don't think he is remotely contemplating nuclear, using nuclear weapons. But I do think it's, uh, I think he is um, focused on trying to convince the world that he has. Uh, now the tyrannical despot will soon know the name. Jim! <laughs> Ignatowski! Right! Already it's spreading! <laughs> the ability to change the dynamics uh, in Europe in a way that he cannot. Um, but I, I don't... Uh, how much of it is a, uh, a cover for just saying we're just doing exercises and, and there's more than that? I, I just can't. It's hard to read his mind. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President to be clear, to, Mr. President, to be clear, you, to be clear, you are convinced that you are convinced that President Putin is going to invade Ukraine. Is that what you just said a few moments yes, ago? Yes, I did. Yes. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. So, is diplomacy off the table then? No. There's all until he does. Diplomacy is always a possibility. I went to four straight puppy bowls. That, that's not possible. You're not a puppy after your first birthday. Dude, I'm little. Got a baby face. What reason do you have to believe he's considering that option at all? We have a significant intelligence capability. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, son of a bitch, uh, son of a bitch, uh, son of a bitch, uh, 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 gun. <laughs> you thought I was going to say uh, son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs> That's all, folks.